everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Laura Afonso. We are live here at the Navigate Credit U Broadcast <coughs> Center for Go Local Prov. And today, on this lovely Halloween afternoon, we are getting a little bit boozy. <laughs> and we're talking about some craft cocktails right here in Providence. We've got some special guests today, and they're going to be mixing up some beverages. And I'm only going to try to take one sip from each. <laughs> Just one. Don't let me get too crazy. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so for our very first guest, we have Michael from Base. Thank you so much for joining me today, Michael. Thank you for having it's me. Much appreciated. So let's get started off. I just want to hear a little bit about yourself and how you got started up with everything. All right. So um, I'm 28 years old from Pawtucket. Um, moved to New York a few years ago, I want to say. Um, took a job in education, but took a part-time job bar backing in this really cool cocktail bar in East Village called Wiseman. Oh, and cool. I just fell in love with the culture ever since. Yeah, bar backing is a great way to start off if you're interested in the bar scene and mm -hmm. the industry life. Bar backing kind of gives you the ins and outs of what a bartender really needs to do from mm -hmm. stocking ice to, you know, grabbing mint for the service bar and everything in between. You're the bartender's right hand man. So I'm sure you know all about yeah. that now. And you're just like watching everything going on. So I really fell in love with the culture here. Yeah. Um, then I moved back to Providence worked a few odd jobs, and then landed a job with um, the Doran's Kitchen and Cocktails. And that's where I really became like a student of craft cocktails. So I'd like to take a second and thank them for everything. My time there was awesome. Yeah, so I really like that, a student of craft mm -hmm. cocktails, because it is really something you invest your time into that you really have to learn about building a cocktail, learning about sugar content and how sugar sinks when you pour, Dude. all that kind of <laughs> stuff. It, there's way more that goes into it than just, you know, pushing the soda gun. No. Yeah. So you're also, so you start with the Dorrance. Can you tell so me I, a little bit about your experience there? Um, yeah, I mean, first things first, it's, I, th I think it's one of the premier places to get a cocktail. Absolutely. And it's a long, it's a long, huge bar. I think the seats had like 20 to 23 seats. And then just from there, I had the opportunity to work under some of the I like to call them like the founding fathers of the cocktails in the yeah. city of Providence. So the guys who've been doing this for like 20, 25 years. So I was able to really study underneath them and also got some experience with like working in a fine dining restaurant and that kind of uh, bringing that type of attention to detail into my craft. Definitely. That absolutely helps in every aspect. Every aspect. Yeah, fine dining is a whole other animal in the service industry, so it really lets you hone in on everything that you're doing, how you're making it. Mm -hmm. You can't just be sloppy and spilling things. You have to be really into what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Now, so you're also over at... The Cook and Brown. Brown. Yes, I'm at the oh. Cook and Brown on the east side. Um, and that's a, a total different uh, change of pace just because it's not as formal as the dorms, if you would. Mm -hmm. And it's very more relaxed. And I think there gives me an opportunity to work on uh, <laughs> being the personable side of being a bartender. And also, yeah. it's, because the pace has changed over there, it also that place has allowed me to really work on my craft. And um, Nemo, the head chef there and the owner, does a good job of like just letting me use the space when I need to use the space. For example, nice. we've done a few how-to videos that we've got a really good response from. And we use that bar because that backdrop is really beautiful. It and is. the entire restaurant is beautiful. It's a great mm -hmm. space, yeah. And they have a really nice cocktail list. Yes, they do. The <laughs> Our bar manager over there, Megan, she's incredibly she talented. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So every day, I, it's good for me because like I'm, again, like I have no problem I'm, I consider myself like a blank canvas, and I just really want to learn, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can as mm. I progress in my career with this. Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now, when you're not on the service side of the bar, when you get to sit on a bar stool, what's your drink of choice? What do you like to order? I'm very impulsive. Um, oh, so okay. if <laughs> it changes from yeah, you know, it changes. Based so on like, if the person is. I remember I worked a a a wedding one time, and, the, and it was an older wedding, so the it was an older group of women. They just kept um, drinking, like, uh, white wine sprinters. I made, like, yeah. 60 of them. You're like, great. And I was drinking 60 of them for the whole summer. But um, yeah. I really do like to use, um, I think gin is, is the start of the base for it. Every great cocktail. Yeah. And, but like I said, I'm impulsive. So whatever people are ordering a lot of, then I'm just like, oh, I guess now it's time to have one of these because that's what's on the agenda today. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm actually a fan of gin myself. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people say that it tastes like pine needles or it tastes like soap. <laughs> but I think it tastes delicious. Yeah, I think, I think it tastes delicious too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like. I'm a personal a dirty gin or a or a vodka soda or a margarita kind of. Those are the three, <laughs> those are really the only three drinks that I will go between. Like you said, depending on the mood. Depending, yeah. It's to me like drinking all depending on the mood. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's usually a ha it's either how happy am I type of mood. Really, okay, is. Yeah. yeah. It's always a good mood. <laughs> and speaking of the mood, the mood right now is seasonal. It's Halloween, yes. where everyone's pumpkin spice, this, and apple cider. So. What do you think, what are some of your favorite <laughs> ingredients to work with for seasonal cocktails? I mean, you've got a lot of experience working on the bars, you see these yeah. cocktail lists. Like, what kind of ingredients are fun, that are original, that you see? I think right now, um, definitely with seasonal, um, f for example, like, I won't drink whiskey during the summer. I just don't think it's something that you would yeah. drink during the summer. But once it's, it's fall and once it gets a little bit chilly, that's something that you could use. Or, right like, up. spiced rum is something that we like to use, too. But I've really been fascinated with, again, working under Megan and like just picking up on cues of what she does at the Cook and Brown. I've been really a big fan of Allspice, which is a uh, West Indies mm -hmm. liqueur, and it uses it's just an Allspice liqueur, and it uses that okay. that spice right there too. Um, and you find them a lot in like tiki drinks, so um, I'm actually I actually have some of that with me today. So. So we're gonna get a peek. We're gonna get a sneak peek. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of that. We hear about, we've heard about your bar history, yeah. how you learned how to make all of these really cool drinks, and you actually started a business, which is yes. Base. Yes, uh, we you started Base. Yes, yeah. I have a partner, my friend Christy, the beautiful Christy, who's here. Yes. Um, moral support, I've known her for a long time. She's a bartender as well, or wants to get into it, and it started with me as like, well, uh, well, I need another bartender, and I also have no problem teaching her everything that I've learned too. So if she wants to be a bartender, then let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, that's great. I think you have to, as a bartender, you can pass on what you have learned from bartenders past bartenders onto past, bartenders yeah. of future. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, what I love about BASE is, I like your, your slogan, I guess I could call it. Yeah. It's keep it a secret. So or, yeah. It, it so really is. I like, probably like it's this it mysterious thing. Shed some light on how we got started. Yeah. With that. So yeah. I, I'm really curious because I I hear things about it. I see like little snippets, but yeah. you're careful not to share too much. No, we're not. We're, yeah, we very are careful. Um, so how it got started is like one of the things how I wanted to practice on my craft was basically just uh, buying a bunch of alcohol making a bunch of syrups and making some recipes or working on some other recipes that I was familiar with and practicing on my friends. Yeah, and I'm sure um, they didn't mind. Yeah, my, my parents' basement had like a perfect space for it. So it started with me just inviting a few friends. Um, excuse me. And then, you know, like the first time I invited people, I think only six people showed up. And then, but as they progressed and as I progressed as a bartender, like my attention to detail went up and, you know, just uh, becoming, a, like I said, becoming a student of that game and like, just really just like showing my friends or my friends and family how much I've progressed or how much I'm learning. And then it just like picked up and picked up. And next thing you know, we had a menu. And next thing you know, we had yeah. every single cocktail had a different cup. And it got too big to have in my, my parents' basement. Yeah. So we decided to, I teamed up with um, some very good friends of mine, Siobhan and Rachel, who were hosting private Pop, private dinners, if you would, sort yeah. of to like what we were doing. Okay. And they were working out of a studio space in Providence, and they invited us to work a cocktail party there, and they would provide the food. And that was kind of like our coming out party. Yeah. And it was a big thing for me because it had been something that I was so comfortable doing in my parents' basement, but now it was the first time that we're going. I'm going to share this project with the world. With the public. With the public, yeah. Right. And that was a huge, because I, I had never put myself out there like that before. Um, and we just like hit the ground running. We've gotten a lot of positive momentum, I should say. And yeah. we're looking forward to that. Lots of good feedback. Yeah. I think it's really cool to bring something original to Providence and to have this event that if you're looking to be, you know, socially yeah. drinking, going out for a nice cocktail, you know, you're not just looking to go out and have, you know, a whole bunch of just mixed drinks. Yeah. You're looking to have something that tastes good, that had a lot of thought behind it. Definitely. Um, to really pick up on those flavors. Um, this is kind of like the perfect opportunity, and it's really fun. Yeah, I know. Yes. Well, what we really wanted to do too was like, um, you know, like we kind of like woke up one. I woke up one day and just like found a void. And what I really wanted to do was create a space where people can feel comfortable. And also, like, we're in that weird. We're, I mean, we're the same age that like later millennials, almost thirties, where we still want to be social because we're still going out drinking Absolutely. every weekend. Yeah. But we want to try something new. So. But we also wanted, I also wanted to, like I said, I was practicing on my friends, getting them familiar with the cocktail culture. Right. So what our mission is to really un educate the underrepresented demographic in the cocktail culture and make them familiar <laughs> with what goes in a whiskey sour, how to, you know, like how to properly order a cocktail when you go to a bar like that's that a too. Really good point. So that's what we really are aiming to do. All the while we've been throwing secret cocktail parties and incongruent spaces, which is part of our niche too. Okay. Like, 
So we're doing pop-up bars in places where you wouldn't think there would be a pop-up bar. Is it too much of a secret to tell us some examples of where you are? Um, our, last, our last party, which was, I think, went our best party. Like, our first one, we worked out of a studio, wide open studio. We did another studio. Um, and then our last party, we worked out of the Elmwood Diner. Yeah. On Elmwood Street, yeah, which is great because that diner is, com it's like one of the first diners in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not being used right now, but everything in there works. So we didn't, so when we invited our guests to it, you know, they didn't get the address until like a day before. That's a part of it. Yeah. I mean, some of them got the address they didn't even know. We didn't let people know that it was the Elmwood Diner. Right. They just they followed, just, they put know, the address in GPS, in GPS and, like, and oh then they gosh. showed up and they're like, oh my God, we're at the diner. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Because some of the, our patrons that night, had grown grown up going, going to the Elmwood Diner. Oh my gosh. So that's for us to kind of like n tap into that nostalgia and again provide an experience for people that they just probably are not going to get anywhere else. And like yeah. it's such a user oriented experience where like again you don't know where things are going where it's going to be and then once you get there you don't know who's going to be there. Mm. So we're kind of like we're really calling on people to be be social and put themselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now is there a list or some sort of guest <laughs> list that uh, you need to get Yeah, on? we just opened up our RSVP because we do want to open our list to a lot more people. Mm. But um, our team right now was really, really small. It's myself and Christy and then uh, whoever, the, whoever our chef is tonight and whoever they bring in. So for us to sustain <laughs> such a large party is yeah. kind of hard because we do want to focus <laughs> on that detail and giving everyone a pleasurable experience. Right. We're not necessarily worried about numbers right now. We're just worried about like really perfecting our craft and yeah. getting the quality, right job done. Quantity. Yeah, quality. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, how many people on average do you usually have? I want to say on average 45 people. Wow. Our first party was 45. Our mm -hmm. second party was 70 people. Oh, my God. And although everyone loved it, I was upset because we okay, couldn't so get the drinks out fast okay, enough. Okay, okay. Like, I, I hated waiting at a line. I, I hated yeah. seeing people wait in line. But everyone loved you know, it, and I was great about it. Hands, but we only have two. We just couldn't get the people, drinks out so. fast enough. And then our second party, I mean, our third party, excuse me, we saw 46 people. Okay. And that went perfect because okay. we had drinks were being made, and we had people passing out drinks. So it went, nobody had to wait. Food right. got passed around, and it was perfect. Yeah. Nice. Now, what kind of food do you, will you sometimes or occasionally have our last our last party we were in a diner so we kind of wanted to tap into that like american classic food so yeah. we just had um but with a little twist to it how we wanted to do things so right. we had uh sliders tomato soup apple pie Fun. grilled cheese a little quick bites to keep people uh what sober think of <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. what would you think of, of the diner as well too exactly Okay, so we've listened to you talk about all of your <laughs> amazing craft that you've built and learned. So can you tell me what you're going to make me today? And if you could walk me through. Yeah, we're going to walk you through it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm going to take notes. So we're going to be making a tiki style flip. Ooh. Um, and I say tiki because we are using some rum and we're using that allspice. Okay. But um, this drink comes from, we wanted to, our, our most popular cocktail within our patrons is um, a rum drink on there like called Almond Love You Better. It's a play on love words it. as I'm going to love you better. Um, and it's just almond milk, coconut rum, and pineapple juice. I wanted to create something like a pina colada, but I don't like cream and I didn't want to yeah. do any dairy. I think so, that cream yeah. and, and with milk mixed with alcohol can sometimes be a little, a little bit too much. Yeah, so we didn't do that. It is a huge risk. Yeah. Um, and then we added a little egg white to just froth it up. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to do a seasonal cocktail. Okay. So we're gonna get started on that yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, so I love egg white in a cocktail because if you haven't seen it before, I mean, when you shake an egg white mm -hmm. in a cocktail, it gets so nice and frothy, it gives it that nice little head on the glass, it really comes out beautiful. It makes such a nice, so smooth and soft texture. Yes, yes it does. Drink. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna get started, so um, we're gonna do um, a little bit of coconut rum, do yeah. some, Coconut spiced rum. rum. Awesome. So, a couple different kinds of rum. De yeah, a couple different kinds of rum. Yeah. So, two parts. Well, yeah, I'm just making, I'm making enough for oh, two cocktails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one, and for, then one for me. One for you, one for <laughs> me, yeah. Coconut rum, this is the, yep, the coconut rum, and there's a cinnamon. Some cinnamon. So, now, do you make some of your syrups yourself? We make all the syrups ourselves, all yeah. Yourself. I make everything myself so with the help. So, you use it on your own? Yeah, um, awesome. and then this is the spiced rum. We used some of that already. And then we're just going to go, 
We're gonna add a whole egg in egg. here. A whole egg. Okay, a whole so egg. Not yeah. Just the whites. Not the egg. No, when you use a whole egg, it kind of creates like an eggnog, ah. and that's something that we wanted. Again, we used egg whites, but yes. you know, a flip is typically like a drink that you would have like after dinner or something okay. like that. Yeah. So um, we're hoping that with something like this, you end your night with this cocktail. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Classic bartender, over the shoulder Yeah, shade. everybody has their own technique. Yep. I've you noticed know, that. Everyone has their own clutch. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing started. Yeah, let's see it. And then we're just going to double strain it so we don't get Ooh, any. The double strain. Wow. Look at that. It looks delicious. Wow. You're right, the, um, having the yolk in there. Having the yolk kind of changes it a little bit. Yeah. We're just going to add a little bit of Angostura bitters, which is mm. every cocktail bartender's best friend. And then to mm. get some aroma in there, we're just going to create a little bit of cinnamon on top. Yeah. I wish I could go in like full detail and make this thing pretty, but this is as best as we could do. I think this looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, I'll have a sip with you. All right, we'll do a little cheers. Cheers. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> this really does taste like fall in a little cute cup. And I have to say, I really appreciate your glassware. It's beautiful. <laughs> and your coasters. I don't know, obviously, they can't see, but you have your... Yeah, that's name. our logo right there. It's just B-A-S. Um, we got the... We're, the word base obviously is the root word of the word basement, where we got this mm. whole thing started. Um, okay, because that was It's kind of like, this. yeah, it's weird. Like, it just came to me like overnight. Not, I shouldn't say overnight. I was just like thinking there, but it, it was really like, what, you know, what we're trying, what we eventually, what we've been doing is creating a space where people can come and be comfortable and learn about something and try some different things. So. Yeah. Comfortable as though you were in your parents' basement hanging Enough. Out with your friends. Yeah, but so. not that – because we still try to create that, like, that like cocktail vibe, yeah. that cocktail bar vibe, um, but it just happened. I don't know. It, like, it worked. It wasn't, like, something yeah, – I didn't yeah. have – it was this one time, one shot. We hit it, and it, we've been stuck with it. And, like, it works because it's also so cryptic. Yeah. We spelled the word phonetically, so yep. that's why it looks like that. And people just don't know what it is. And we it don't really, it adds more to the mystique. It. And we're yeah. not less, I mean, we eventually want to open our doors to everyone. And we yeah. want to be able to service everyone. But right now, our niche is becoming a moving target and Absolutely. providing something that people I think have it makes to it be there. makes it all the more fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to take one more sip. Of this <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm definitely going to take one more sip because it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for Absolutely. having us. Absolutely. We can't wait to try more of your cocktails coming up in the future. So can we follow you on Instagram? Yes, we are. And maybe be in the know yeah. with what's going on with Base. Yes, um, we are on Instagram as Base PVD, just B-A-S-P-V-D. Um, our next pop-up is um, a little bit of a different concept, but we were contacted by Ten Rocks Tapas Bar in Pawtucket. Cool. And uh, they are giving me complete creative control of the evening the Ooh. night before Thanksgiving. So oh we're putting cocktails God. on that the menu. Like the and we're going to have, I you know, reached out to my friend Siobhan. And she's helping me consult on the tapas menu. Yeah. So it's good for us because we get to open our doors to everyone. And also try our hand at, uh, I guess, restaurant managing, if you would, and creating yeah. a space. Um, but we hope to see a lot of people there, just because I know b in the past we haven't been able to service as much people as we wanted to. Yep. But with an opportunity like this, our doors are open for everyone, and I get to tap into my Cape Verdean roots. So I go. can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> too, Defin yeah. Oh, my God, That's definitely. beautiful. Awesome. Well, make sure you follow them on Instagram at BasePVD so you can check out where they're going to be popping up in the future so you can get on that guest list. That <laughs> mystery, the mysterious coveted guest list. All right. Well, don't go anywhere because we have some more cocktails coming right up.